everyone. So I guess I'd start by saying, as Dan was mentioning, technology is only a small piece of the puzzle, um, and we do recognize that. Uh, that being said, I want to give you a little overview of Snowflake. Some of you may have already heard of us. Um, but as I was preparing for this, I was kind of trying to think where the synergies are between Snowflake and Data Vault and why we see it as such a good complement. <laughs> so when I was thinking about this and the themes that actually come to mind when I think of Data Vault, I thought of three. And so the first was agility, so being agile. And of course, that's the agile methodology, but it's also adaptability, right? So being able to adapt to changes in business rules or source systems or just things that happen naturally as your business grows and changes. So having that agile approach and with Data Vault specifically, you know, links give you that ability to very quickly adapt very um, in an agile way. The second was being flexible. Um, and so here I'm thinking more about you know, being able to look at whatever period in the history that you want and have full audibility, auditability. Um, and so uh, not having this flexibility can be really challenging in some of the other more traditional modeling techniques. And I think with Data Vault, we really address this very nicely. And the third was, didn't come up, but it was meant to say scalability. So being able to scale uh, your system. And I think the whole Data Vault model really enables this, right? So um, you can very easily add things to it and, and not have to reload huge amounts of data every single time like you may have in the past. So how Snowflake fits in with these three themes? Um, the first thing is that we're a full SQL-based platform. And, and that gives you the adaptability piece, right? So it lets you plug into whatever you have in place and whatever might come in the future. Uh, we also have things like our Spark connector, our Python connector, and so we're constantly building our ecosystem out to make it really easy for customers to really plug right in and, and, and get started. The second is that we are built for the cloud, and I'm going to really focus on this for the remainder of it, but really what that means is, is you have the ability to be very flexible with how you deploy on Snowflake. Uh, the way that we have enabled the architecture allows you to scale really, really quickly and uh, both up and down. Um, and then the final piece is we're delivered as a full service. So we can get, start really small and get really big and you don't have to worry about um, all of the pre-provisioning. Uh, you don't even have to worry about indexing or any of the little bits and pieces that you've had to in the past. And so the solution Snowflake offers really addresses some of the key limitations of the existing platforms. Okay, so I'm gonna really focus on, again, how we are both agile and elastic in the way that we can scale. Um, and it all comes down to sort of three key dimensions of scaling. The first that I'm gonna talk about is scaling across. Uh, so the way that we enable this on Snowflake is through our architecture. So scaling across means, um, you know, when you add a new business unit or a new project onto your data platform, you don't want that new project to have effect on existing workloads. You also don't necessarily want your loading processes to affect your, your main BI, right? So having scalability across different workloads is really important. Um, the way that Snowflake has addressed this issue is co compared to traditional architectures, like the two that you see up here, where really the limitations were either competing of uh, resources, so essentially contention on a single cluster, or uh, really difficult scaling. So even though you could scale something like a shared nothing system, um, an MPP type of uh, platform, it's not a very easy one-click situation, right? It involves a lot of manual effort on your part. So with Snowflake, the architecture is completely new to address this. What we have is what we call multi-cluster shared data. So you have a single copy of data in the center here. And as you need, you can spin up compute clusters to do different things. So for example, you might have one that does data loading. You might have another that does the transforms. And then you might have a third to run your business intelligence. And at minimum, most of our customers have at least three. We have some that have 20, 50 of these. What's unique is that you can turn them off when they're not in use, right? So your BI might only run during business hours, for example, and that's all you pay for. So super, super flexible there. 
The second way that we scale Snowflake is scaling up. So think of this as, I need more horsepower. So a lot of times your data scientists are going to want this to run really large models on your data. Uh, and so with Snowflake, we allow you to do a scale up immediately in a single, query, or a single command, rather. So um, the example I like to use is, you know, I, I want a faster car. Give me something that runs faster. I have a whole bunch more data. I have a much more complex query that I need to run. And importantly, I don't want that to affect everything else on the system, and that goes back to the first uh, way that we scale, right? So we did a, a little test uh, loading a billion rows of data into Snowflake. Across the bottom is the size of the cluster that we use. So we went from an extra small all the way up to, what is it, a 3XL? As you can see, as you scale up, um, you get better performance. So we went from the 13 minutes all the way down uh, to sub minute. And as you double the number of servers, the, the time t it takes to load those records decreases. Because Snowflake bills you for the time that each of these are running and how big they were, what's interesting is that you can get it done faster, but you don't necessarily need to pay any more. Right? So that line that you're seeing there is the cost of loading in each of those scenarios. So the cost ends up being flat for a period of time, even though you're getting it done in a fraction. OK, and the last piece of scaling here is scaling out. So this um, usually comes in two different ways. Either you have peak periods where your BI reports are being accessed by more people. So usually you'll have that Monday mornings, end of month, that kind of thing. The other way is for loading. So sometimes you might have a whole bunch more data coming in, and you need to load it all at once. So scaling out to meet that need is, is the solution here. It's not the same as scaling up, right? I don't necessarily need a bigger compute cluster. I just need more of them. I need it to be uh, wider, essentially. And Snowflake does this automatically. So think of it as a high traffic period, right? So peak periods uh, during the day, you have a whole bunch more people trying to access the data. Um, what Snowflake can do is essentially add more lanes to this highway, and it does it um, by detecting queuing of requests. So as soon as your queries start to queue, we'll add a second, third, fourth, and you can set a maximum number of these lanes. Um, so just to illustrate this, uh, so we did a, a little test. Um, you can see here, so as we're going from uh, left to right, we're kind of going uh, up to 30 users and then all the way down. So we went 1, 5, 10, all the way up to 30 and back down. Um, the first row shows the number of queries that we're able to run um, throughout those, those, that high peak in concurrency. The second is the, how long it took, right? So it's the query response time. This is typical, right? As soon as that peak starts, your reports run really slowly, your data loads get, uh, get held up. And the last uh, column here, or row rather, is showing the queue time. So really the, the thing that's making these queries uh, really slow is the fact that they all are waiting behind each other in line, kind of like a traffic jam. We did a test, and we increased this to a larger cluster. So that's that scale up that we talked about. It was a little bit better. You can see the response time doesn't peak as high, but it's still pretty slow at that 30 user mark, and there's still queuing happening. So rather than scale up, we did a scale out. And again, this is completely automatic. So the last uh, solution here, scaling up, you'll see that black line shows you how many lanes we had open, and it scales back down automatically as well. Uh, the query response time, that looks a lot better, right? So even at that 30 user mark, you're getting really consistent query responses, and there's no queuing. So you get better uh, performance, and you also pay less. So we found that that scaling out approach actually ran for less time. It got more requests done. And because it's time-based uh, pricing, you're actually paying less. OK, so this is just a snapshot of a couple of customers that are live with Data Vault on Snowflake. Um, I didn't have enough time right now to go through some of the other bits and pieces, but I will mention them. Um, you know, we have something like uh, we have a hash functioning built into Snowflake, which a lot of these customers utilize. Um, we also have multi-table insert to help with loading uh, multiple tables at once from a single source. Um, we have some sample architectures as well, which I'll put up there. Uh, this is a really kind of generic sample, but I have some other examples on my computer. 
Um, but I'm out of time, so if, any more, if you guys have any more questions, we'll be right over there. Thank you.